It's Councillor Marg Atley. Good afternoon. It's Councillor Marg Atley, Mayor of Mansfield Shire Council. Welcome you, welcome, welcoming you to our first virtual meeting held today on the 19th of May, 2020. Before we commence today's virtual council meeting, I wish to note that this meeting is being conducted online in accordance with, with the provisions of COVID-19 Omnibus Emergency Measures Act 2020, which was passed on the 23rd of April by the Victorian Parliament. This new act introduced provisions into the new Local Government Act 2020 to allow for virtual council meetings, such as this one, to take place from the 1st of May until the 1st of November 2020. On Wednesday, the 29th of April, the Minister for Local Government issued his first good practice guideline outlining a number of requirements for the holding of virtual council meetings, which you will see in effect today. I also remind everyone that local government decision-making, unlike state and federal government, does not afford the benefit of parliamentary privilege and hence no protection is afforded to councillors and council officers for comments made during meetings, which are subsequently challenged in a court of law and determined to be, to be as slanderous. Attendance. Firstly, in order to be recorded as present at the meeting, each councillor must confirm that they can hear the proceedings, they can see the other councillors in attendance and be seen by other members, and they can be heard to speak. When we move to present and apologies, I will ask all councillors to confirm this. Public access. Secondly, it is a requirement that all virtual meetings of council are made accessible to the public by being live stream, streamed live via the council's website. Please note that closed sections of council meetings to consider confidential items are not required to be live streamed nor recorded electronically. A quorum. Quorum for, of, a council, of a meeting of our council is that three councillors are present. If for some reason the quorum requirement is breached during the meeting by councillors dropping out of the meeting for some reason, we will adjourn the meeting and try to restore these connections. Technical problems. Finally, please note that should we encounter significant technical difficulties that do not allow today's meeting to continue at all, the meeting will be adjourned and those items on the agenda that have not been considered will be deferred for consideration by council at a later date. Thank you for your patience and support as we trial this new form of council meeting. I will move into item number two, present. I call on each of the councillors in turn to um, let us know that they are present. Councillor Olver. Councillor Oliver here, I can see all five councillors and eight council officers. Councillor Sladden. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Sladden here, Bonnie Doom Ward. Uh, yes, I can confirm, I can see everybody and I can hear everybody clearly. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Volkring. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I too can hear and see all my fellow councillors, including yourself, across the room, and also acknowledge my commitment to the statement. Councillor Westendorf. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Confirming that I can both see and hear all councillors. Councillors, to confirm this, would you please raise your hand to show that each statement, you hear all statements of all councillors. Thank you. Apologies. Madam CEO, any apologies for today's meeting, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. There are no apologies for tonight's meeting. Thank you. The statement of commitment. I will read the statement of commitment and then ask each councillor to confirm their commitment to the statement. As councillors of Mansfield Shire, 
we are committed to ensuring our behaviour meets the standards set by the Mansfield Shire Councillor Code of Conduct and Councillor Charter. We will, at all times, faithfully represent and uphold the trust placed in us by the community. Councillor Oliver. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Acknowledgement of country. Our meeting is being held on the lands of the Tungarong people. We wish to acknowledge them as the traditional owners. We'd also like to pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and Aboriginal elders of other communities who may be here today. Thank you, Councillor Oliver. I'll just go back to the statement of commitment. I'll ask each councillor to confirm that they support that commitment. Councillor Oliver, could you please do that? I confirm. Thank you. Councillor Sladden? I confirm that I support <clears throat> the commitment. Thank you. Councillor Volkering? Thank you. Item number six, disclosure of conflicts of interest. Would each councillor in turn um, to let me know if they have no conflicts of interest? Councillor Olver. I have no Excuse conflict me, of Mayor. interest to declare. I think we may have overlooked Councillor Westendorf. I'm sure it wasn't done on purpose. But Madam Mayor, you are muted. Councillor Westendorf, would you confirm the statement, please? Madam Mayor, I confirm my commitment to the uh, statement and I also declare that I have no conflict of interest with any of the items on the agenda tonight. Thank you very much. Councillor Volkring, conflicts of interest? Thank you. Councillor Sladden? Uh, Madam Mayor, I confirm that I have no conflicts of interest on any of the items present on this evening's agenda. Thank you. Councillor Olver? Councillor Olver, you're muted. Need to unmute, Councillor Olver. Um, Madam Mayor, I think I'm having a bit of a tussle with putting it unmuted where someone else is muting it. And, all right. Uh, we're, Thank we're you very right much. Um, so, so I want you want me to declare that I have no conflict of interest. That's right. And Thank so you. So at this point of time, I have no conflict of interest with. Um, or I understand that I haven't got any conflict of interest with any of the items on today's agenda. Thank you, Madam. Thank you Mayor. very much indeed. Move to item number seven. Could I have a motion to accept the minutes of the meeting on the 21st of April, please? Councillor Volkring? Seconder? Councillor Olver? All in favour? Carried. Thank you. Item number eight, representations. Madam CEO, are there any representations today, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have representations wide services to today for item 12.2.1 on today's agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any notices of motion, Madam CEO? There are no notices of motion. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. I'll move to item number 10, which is the Mayor's report. Councillors will have read that. I just want to highlight a couple of things in the report that is written since our last council meeting. The first thing and I have been doing in any messages I've been putting out to the community or the radio or television is just <coughs> congratulating our community. And I just wanted to highlight that, how well our community has worked together through this pandemic. I want to highlight as well, the spirit that was shown around Mansfield and district on an Anzac day, a day when we couldn't come together to celebrate, but people celebrated in their own way. And I had people telling me that they were standing in their driveways and often they would hear the strains of a bugle from the distance. So thank you to our community for your respect. 
I would also like to acknowledge the passing of Richard White, the loss to the community of a creative genius and a loss to this community and to his family. So thank you to Richard for the work he's done in the community. Could I please have a motion to um, receive the Mayor's report from the period 29 of April to the 30th of May 2020, please? Councillor Westendorf, seconder. Councillor Volkering, all in favour? Thank you, it's passed. I'll move to item number 11, reports from council appointed representatives. The list on the agenda is external and internal committees that councillors have been appointed to. Are there any councillors who wish, wish to give us an update of any of the areas that they are responsible for, please? Councillor Sladden. Thank you, Madam Mayor. While the uh, Lake Yield and Land and On Water Implementation Plan Management Group has not been able to meet during uh, the current COVID-19 uh, environment. Uh, members have been quite active in making submissions to the Lake Eildon Activation Plan um, review or report. And also I would like to uh, inform uh, my fellow councillors and the community uh, that <clears throat> Better Boating Victoria is undertaking a regional Victorian uh, boating facility survey in their review of uh, regional recreational boating and facilities. This survey is now available online and I do encourage all recreational users of Lake Eildon, and I mean all recreational users, of Lake Eildon to participate in that survey, uh, in that survey, in that survey, and if they go to the uh, getinvolved.transport.vic.gov.au website, uh, you will find the uh, survey there. But if you just Google Better Boating Victoria, uh, I'm sure you'll find the links to do that. But it is quite quite important that regional Victoria certainly uh, has a say uh, in funding better boating facilities and uh, particularly in line with our Lake Eildon activation plan, uh, that that um, information feeds into the bigger picture of recreational boating facilities in regional Victoria and particularly here at Lake Eildon. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for that. Update, Councillor Sladden. Any other councillors wish to speak? Uh, Councillor Volkring. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, you and I, uh, are on uh, several uh, planning committees. Uh, the Integrated Fire Management Planning Committee, which we haven't had a meeting since the last one. Um, but we are also on the Mansfield Municipal Emergency Planning Committee, Emergency Management Planning Committee, and the combined Mansfield, Mount Buller and Mount Sterling Municipal Emergency Management Planning Committee. And we did meet, or both those groups met last week, which I think was uh, quite a productive meeting. Uh, and out of that uh, flowed quite a number of action items. Um, one of which was to link out to Osnet services to get them to come to one of our future meetings so that we can um, ascertain the role they, the important role they play uh, when we have significant emergencies such as uh, during the bushfire period. Um, and the other perhaps important aspect of uh, our meeting was the um, welcoming i suppose of our new senior sergeant of police steve carden so it's good to have steve on board also acknowledge the work of uh, damien keegan our former ceo who a uh, senior sergeant of police who has moved on and um also just an update from our senior health officer kevin murphy just in regard to provisions within the community regarding the covid 19 pandemic at the moment uh, which was also really beneficial 
one of the other thing, I guess, was just the uh, update from Mount Buller, Mount Sterling. Uh, there's a lot of anxiety, I think, within the broader community, particularly the business sector, regarding uh, the uh, opening of the snow season, when and if that might happen. All I can say, I think, with some safety, is that uh, there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes to try and put to government a plan that is workable and sustainable for the forthcoming season. But no announcement as yet. Uh, and I guess with some snow on the mountain, people are becoming even more anxious. So I think that pretty much sums it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You. Any other councillors? Councillor Westendorf? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the Audit and Risk Committee met yesterday and uh, that was a fairly positive meeting, I think. In brief, there will be a set of minutes coming to the council, but uh, in brief, the Vargo uh, representative did suggest that um, things were going to be fairly positive in terms of the interim management letter and that there were no causes for concern around um, the state government's auditing of our affairs. He did raise a concern about the possible accounting standard to be applied for our um, recording of the and reporting of the dual court stadium, whether that should be done as a lease or as, a, as an owned asset where we obtain the benefit from it. Uh, he's gone away to try and find that out and I am sure that our finance manager will hear from him in due time. So uh, it, was, it, it wasn't a matter of concern, but just an, an unresolved matter. Um, the audit committee also commended the council for the work that we have done in OH&S, the occupational health and safety, and some of the progress that we've made there, but they did highlight the fact that they would like to see more work done around um, employee well-being rather than accident and risk. And um, so we note that there are some um, actions happening within the council on that, but um, the audit um, committee, the audit and risk committee is, is going to be tracking that. So that's fairly much just a brief summary. I think generally fairly positive and fairly straightforward. And again, um, thanks to all the people who put the work in for the finance team in particular. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Westendorf. Anyone, any other councillors wish to speak about their representative groups? Um, I'll just mention about the Municipal Association of Victoria, which is the MOV, and as Mayor, I'm the delegate for the MOV, and the work that we've been doing and coming together, particularly the mayors across the state, just advocacy to government around COVID-19, and that's an ongoing thing um, that we will follow. We have a recommendation on page seven. Could I have that as a motion, please? Councillor Sladden, would you like to read the motion, please? Madam Mayor, uh, the recommendation is the council note the verbal reports provided by councillors in relation to their representation on external committees. Thank you very much. Could I have a seconder of that, please? Councillor Volkering, all in favour? That is passed. Thank you. I'll move on to item number 12, which is officer reports. The first of those is departmental reports. Uh, Madam CEO, would you like to lead us in that, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll take the report as read and happy to ask, answer any questions. Thank you. Councillors, have we any questions or statements, please? Councillor Sladden? Uh, Madam Mayor, it is not a uh, question, but it is a statement. And that is, I'm sure I join in with my fellow councillors in uh, congratulating and farewelling Sutty, uh, Glenn Sutcliffe, who has uh, been here for over 20 years. Um, I particularly remember Sutty uh, in his role of the, um, in the uh, rail trail development. And uh, I very much appreciated, uh, I was just a mere ratepayer back then, but uh, I very much uh, appreciated his pragmatic uh, approach. Uh, to see that wonderful uh, project come to fruition. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. I'm sure we all support you in your statement then. Councillors, any other questions or, or comments about the departmental reports? Always very 
lengthy and very explicit for us in every month. So we have a motion there that council receive and note the departmental reports for the period the 21st of April 2020 to the 13th of May 2020. Could I have a motion on that, please? Councillor Westendorf, a second. Seconder. Councillor Volkring, all in favour? That's passed. Thank you. Move on to 12.2, development services. We have an item 12.2.1, which is the request to waive statutory planning fees for a planning permit. Prior to that, I have Judy Dixon, the strategic projects officer, manager, and the director, Simone Reeves, from Mansfield Autistic Statewide Services, who would like to present to us. So welcome to you both. Who thank is go you, who's Nancy. going to lead? Judith? Um, thank you. Has uh, Simone joined us? I yes, can't... Simone is here. Right. Awesome. Um, well, I will hand over to Simone. And Simone will need to take herself off mute first, Simone, please. There Thank you. Are. you. Beautiful. Thank you. Hello, how are you? Thank you. Madam Mayor, councillors and officers, thank you for the opportunity to speak regarding our request for council to waive the planning fees associated with our 25 million expansion project at the farm. As you know, we're a not-for-profit organisation with a proud 50-year history of supporting families with living with autism. We're led by a volunteer board of skilled and passionate community members. We actively decided to stay in Mansfield for our expansion because of our fit with community and the surrounding landscapes and because of our foundation roots. We know we're good for Mansfield and Mansfield is home for us. Our project is called Operational Game Changer. It will transform lives and it will be a game changer for the Mansfield Shire economy. We currently employ 114 people in stable year round jobs and that number will more than double with our expansion. We will help diversify the Mansfield economy in education and health in ways compatible with livability and destination strengths. We attract young families to move here to access our programs and for jobs. Our families visit from around Victoria for programs, then return year after year for holidays. Our family camp hub, available for external groups, will provide a unique accommodation, farm experience and meetings option, contributing to and diversifying the visitor economy. Our business is an essential service and we provide the resilience and stability in the face of unforeseen events and seasonal variation. Operational Game Changer is a key infrastructure project that will deliver evidenced economic output and jobs during both the construction and ongoing operational phases. This project really does tick all of your economic development objectives. It's a massive task ahead of us and we're working hard with all levels of government and the philanthropic sector to, secure, to secure funds for our capital works. It's complicated and a competitive space to be. We certainly don't sit neatly in one box, which has its pros and cons, as we deliver on public purpose policy outcomes across a range of portfolios. While we're working hard to get traction with funding, we're also really busy running our services and the demand is real and it is growing. Behind the scenes, we're planning strategically to see what we can fast forward ourselves and how we can stage our expansion to fit with any funding opportunities. And I assure you, every dollar counts. During the council budget process, we asked council for a commitment of 50,000 to demonstrate tangible support for our project. While disappointed we weren't included in the budget, we do understand you have lots to deliver. Our request for waiving our planning application fees is made in the hope that you appreciate the contributions that we are making and will make in supporting council's own objectives. We ask you to support the officer's recommendation to waive the fees. It would be an in-kind support that would significantly assist us in our determination to, to deliver on Operation Game Changer. So thank you for your time and your consideration. Thank you, Simone. Judy, would you like to speak? No, thank you. I'm just here for support. And if there are any questions directed to me, thank you. Thank um, you very you. much. Thank you. Councillors, any questions of Simone or Judy, please? Councillor Sladden? Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, question for you, Ms. Reeves. Um, could you please uh, just enlighten me as to the legal uh, entity or, or the legal status of the entity of mass? So we're a not-for-profit benevolent organisation. Is that what you mean? Uh, that's what I mean. So you're an incorporated association? Yep. Okay, so you're not a company limited by guarantee? Uh, I'm not sure of the difference. Sorry, Paul. Um, uh, Ms. Dixon. Councillor Sladden, could we take that on notice and get back to you? But my understanding is um, not for profit. We're registered as a charity. We are a company limited by guarantee, is my understanding. But we will take it on notice and confirm with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, councillors. Any other questions? Councillor Volkring. Um, Thanks. I hope you can hear me, Simone. Uh, good to talk to you. Um, Simone, you mentioned just a little while ago that you're across different jurisdictions, if you like, departments. One of whom, does one of, the, does one of those include the education department? Yes, it does. Part of the master plan will be to put a day school and a therapeutic school out on the farm. Um, and we're, we already have registration as a, a non-government special school. Okay, thank you. And if I may, if I may um, Madam Mayor, um, um, to that um, Council of Volkering, we have um, already have an ex formal expression of interest in for the Independent Schools Capital Grant fund and we've met with their board and they're very supportive of the project and we have um, we believe a good relationship with the board now out of the meetings we've done to this date and we will be putting formal applications in when they reopen next January. The maximum we can receive from the state in that fund is five million and it's for one only you can only go once and the federal is a maximum of two million, and we're meeting with the federal Department of Education again tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. Before I ask for a motion on the recommendation, uh, are there any questions of the report writer, the Development Services Manager, Ben McKay, please, Councillor Volkring? Um, Mr. McKay, McKay, sorry, um, I can see you, so hopefully you can hear me, Ben. Um, ben, just to, if you can help me, you may not be able to answer this, uh, but have we waived fees, planning fees, before for not-for-profits? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, to the best of my knowledge, well, certainly since I've been here, um, and that is since September 2018, we haven't waived any fees. Um, but I, I can't comment on prior to that, uh, prior to me commencing in this role. I'm not sure what fees have been waived. I did an extension, extensive search of trim our record system as well. Uh, and I couldn't couldn't find any other previous fees that have been waived. Um, however, that's not to say there aren't any in there. I just couldn't find any on that system. Uh, as well as part of this uh, report, I um, also did some research into other councils. There are other councils that have policies in regard to these sort of things, and they specifically uh, relate generally to the parameters around not-for-profit um, and, and those sort of criteria in assessing these sort of applications. Thanks, Ben. Um, I guess my follow-up question to that is, uh, I suppose it's about community benefit as much as anything. Um, the Rosehaven Hospice 
do you know if they sought to have the planning fees waived? I know they sought to have the planning fees waived, but uh, from my memory and my recollection, those fees weren't waived. Thank you. Um, I guess where I was coming from was trying to understand the principle of fairness and equity for all. And uh, I understand the case that Simone has outlined and supported by Judy. Um, and I'm just trying to get my head around that aspect of it. So thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Balkring. Councillor Sladden. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, in response to Councillor Volkering's question of Mr Mackay, uh, it's my recollection that uh, Rosehaven, while they initially sought that, they withdrew their application for the waiver. That is my recollection. Uh, I do have a follow-up question to Ms Reeves and Ms Dixon, if I may, and that is uh, if either of you can uh, inform us as to the status of your current negotiations or applications for capital funding. Uh, where are you at with that? Thank you. I'm happy to take that if you like, Simone. Um, Councillor Sladen, thank you for the question and through you, Madam Mayor. We are working um, very hard in a space since really November. Um, so we have been in contact um, with both politicians and senior staff um, in the state level with RDV, with the education department and also with DHHS and in the federal sphere, working through Senator Jane Hume and also working um, with Dan Tehan's office. We briefed his minister's advisor just on Monday and we have a meeting tomorrow with senior members of the Federal Education Department. We don't have, um, Council Sladden at this stage, any firm offers of money on the table. We're also working with a number of other philanthropics who've invited um, applications from us. We've got past the expression of interest stage for a number of them with the William Buckland Foundation. We're working with the Tanara Group, which are looking at providing us with expert pro bono assistance in that space as well. We have around about a $3.3 million um, philanthropic uh, target for the total of the 25 million. As you're aware, we've already stumped up for the purchase of the farm, which has been a deposit from us and borrowings from the bank. We feel quite confident with the education department silo of the funding and the independent schools board have indicated um, support at this stage obviously they can't uh, they can't make any firm guarantees until everything is in place we need detailed design for them um, but they're very supportive of those elements of the project that directly relate to the independent school stage which is the day school and the term therapeutic and the associated administration blocks um, we also have the Australian Communities Foundation. They have put up our um, bid for some funding toward accommodation pods for respite and potentially crisis care accommodation. And we have bespoke accommodation units that Paul Valente has designed to be replicable and transportable on the back of semis that can be out at the farm. And then potentially we could have a manufacturing sideline in Mansfield that would um, have these as disability housing and could be transported throughout the state and throughout the country. So we've got a lot of irons in the fire, but the, the sorry, that's a very long answer, um, but we don't have at this stage any committed funds. Thank you very much. Councillors, are there any more questions, please? Councillors, we'll move to the report. You have all um, read the report. We, you've, um, if you've got any questions of Mr McKay first, and then I'll call for a motion. Councillors? No questions? I'll call for a motion. On There is a recommendation on page 12. Do I have a motion? Councillor Olver. 
We I'm um, happy to move the recommendation. Do you mind reading it out, please? Recommendation that Council approve the request to waive the planning permit application fee $26,976.40 for Mansfield Autism Statewide Services Planning Application Number P026-2020. Thank you. Do I have a seconder for that, please? Councillor Sladden? Anyone oppose? What one opposed? Councillor Oliver, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thanks, Madam Mayor, I would. Um, it's an incredibly bold move by Mansfield Autism Statewide Services and a very innovative, um, proactive move and a fantastic vision, not only for the Mansfield community, but for a much broader community because we know that um, families are helped all around Victoria and possibly further. Um, we know that, you know, it's very hard to attract funds for minority groups, but, um, and it's very hard to get the support for minority groups, but the Autistic Centre has been able to demonstrate over the years fantastic results working with these young people. We've seen this in Mansfield firsthand, um, and we've got some great success stories in Mansfield that we know of. So I think it's, you know, something that we as a council can do in supporting this great initiative. Thank you. Councillor Sladden, would you like to speak as a seconder, please? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd just like to support Councillor Olver's uh, sentiments uh, that he just um, revealed to us, but uh, also uh, from my point of view, is the alignment that this project has with our draft economic development strategy. Uh, it really does fit into uh, the, um, the design or the uh, nature of that strategy in terms of showcasing Mansfield as a um, potential uh, venue uh, a, a attractive venue for similar statewide organisations to perhaps uh, move to uh, our shire and uh, set up shop, so to speak. Um, so uh, that's why I support this um, this recommendation, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Volkring, would you like to speak against the motion, please? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, also my fellow councillors, uh, Councillor Olver and Councillor Sladden. And um, you can probably tell by the look on my face that I'm grappling with this issue, but, and it seems perhaps somewhat counterintuitive that a retired primary school principal who's spent most of his life advocating for uh, kids with special needs should be speaking against the motion. But um, what I'm attempting to do is grapple with this notion of fairness and equity that I mentioned before. And uh, also at the same time, understanding the longer term economic benefit to our community, but more importantly, the benefit to those children who will pass through the service, not just in the short to immediate term, but the longer term ones the goal and the vision is realised. I guess it's hard to quantify the issue of fairness and equity in some sense when I'm cognizant of the fact that many of the children that will go through the service have been significantly disadvantaged in their upbringing already. But it relates to other organisations. And we've got a number in Mansfield, I believe, that are doing some wonderful work for the broader community. So I, I do think that there's a strong case to support this. I acknowledge my fellow councillors and the comments they've made, particularly Councillor Sladen, about the economic long-term benefit, the employment benefits, as uh, Simone has referred to as well, and uh, they're not to be dismissed. So yeah, it's, a, it's a challenging one for me to try and deal with when I've got all of those things 
going along in my head. Probably enough said, I think, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Volkring. Would any other councillor like to speak for or against the motion? Uh, councillor Westendorf. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, and, and I respect the opinions of, of Councillor Volkering, um, but I, I see that this is somewhat of an exception case, and I, I don't see that we necessarily establish any dangerous precedents with this. I, I think it's beyond doubt that the, um, the autism services are a, a, an incredibly valuable, very good community. Um, uh, but, you know, the, the community benefits from this. My, my decision is not so much on the basis of the work that they do, although I was very sympathetic to their request for the, the funding out of our budget, and it would have been nice to have been able to do that. We couldn't do those resources. I see the opportunity here to do that as an in-kind contribution. And I do that because I see this is so tightly aligned with our strategic directions, our council plan, what our vision is for our community. And, and so I'm distancing my decision from you know, the, the, the nature of them being a, a not-for-profit, but seeing this as something that can be done uh, to further the development of our community. And as Councillor Sladen said, position us, you know, for, for maybe attracting not just the people who are going to work there, but maybe others of a similar ilk. So um, I, I would totally support this. Thank you, Councillor Westendorp. Councillor Olva, would you like to reply? You have a right of reply. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I think it's um, been well covered by um, Councillor Westendorp and Councillor Sladden. And, and I thank um, Councillor Volkering for, for his input and, and I understand where he stands on that. Thank you. I call for those in favour. Those against? The motion is carried. Thank you. And thank you to Ms Dixon and Ms Reeves for joining us this evening on probably the first people on our virtual um, meeting coming in and presenting to us. So thank you so much this evening. Madam Mayor, Council and Officers, thank you very much. We really appreciate this. As I said, every dollar will count for us. So it's, it's very much appreciated. Thank you. And we make a commitment. We will make this happen for Mansfield. Good on you. Thank you. Thank you. We move on to item 12.3.1, the Botanic Park Playground Design. Uh, we have the report here from from Melanie Hotton, our Community Services Manager. Councillors, have you got any questions of Ms Hotton, please? No questions? Do I have anyone happy to move the motion? The recommendation is on page 18. Councillor Westendorf. Madam Mayor, I move that we endorse, the Council endorses the final concept design for the Mansfield Botanic Park Playground, that we authorise further funding applications to be submitted on behalf of Council in relation to the delivery of this project, and that we commence procurement once sufficient funding has been secured. Thank you. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Olver. Anyone against? Those, you're against Councillor Sladen? Uh, I am, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Westendorf, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I believe that this is a necessary project. I believe that the old equipment, and we're, we're, we've been briefed on this before, the, the existing playground equipment is past its use-by date. We need to resolve that. We need to build safe, um, enjoyable facilities for our community. And I believe that this plan meets those requirements. And so I'm happy to endorse it. Thank you. Councillor Olver, are you happy to speak to seconding the motion? Certainly will. And I, I totally agree with uh, Councillor Westendorp's comments. And um, I'd like to acknowledge the, the council officers and the great um, the process getting to this point, uh, the engagement of community 
voluntary community members and their hours put in getting getting to this um, point. So, yeah, it's well done. Thank you. Councillor Sladden, would you like to speak against the motion, please? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, I'd also like to uh, acknowledge the work that council officers have put into this um, project. And um, while in the past I have supported this project, uh, unfortunately, the current circumstances in which we find ourselves, I do not believe now is the time to be embarking on such a project. Uh, the two reasons I have is firstly, is the council does not have a master plan for the botanical park. Uh, I have long questioned the reason why we have not got a master plan in place. There are numerous drafts sitting on shelves, gathering dust. We have not moved on that. To now initiate a project uh, of this size, in terms of the monetary resources required in the current COVID post bushfire environment, I do not believe that this is required or necessary now. Certainly a project for the future, but not in the current circumstances. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sladden. Any other councillor wish, wish to speak for or against the motion? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Councillor Volkring, are you? I'm abstaining. Uh, those in favour, against? Thank you, the, the motion is carried. Thank I think we, we move to 12.3.2. Establishment and Advisory Committee, Business and Community Recovery Advisory Committee. Councillors, any questions of Ms Hotton in relation to the report you have in front of you, please? Councillor Sladden. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Ms Hutton, my uh, question is in relation to the terms of reference, uh, specifically uh, the makeup, uh, the composition of the committee, um, and uh, asking that, um, well, I'm probably flagging uh, an amendment to those uh, terms of reference uh, to include a wider uh, representation from our community. Um, as to how the current composition of the committee has been determined. Could you please enlighten us uh, with that? Thank you. Through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the current composition of the um, membership within the terms of reference has just been developed uh, in line with similar councils that are delivering a similar uh, program. Um, but we welcome, of course, any input or amendments that councils may have. Thank you. Councillors, any other questions or Councillor Westendorf? Yes, I uh, just would like uh, Ms Hotton to confirm that if we go ahead with this motion, that we are not necessarily tying ourselves to the um, detail of the spend that is listed in the recommendation or the, or the officer's document, that that is subject to change and will be re refined by this committee or by council um, after the event. Through you, Madam Mayor, um, that's correct, Councillor Westendorp. The recommendation before you is just the establishment of the committee uh, and the terms of reference and the appointment of councillors. Thank you. Any other councillors want to ask a question? Councillor Oliver? Yeah, I'd, I'd just lead on there from Councillor Wessendorp's question. Um, I, I think, you know, community advisory committees are fantastic. We've got such a great community and, and it's, you know, we really want to encourage input from our community. It's all about them, really. Um, and I'm a bit concerned that 
people might think it's already been, um, in terms of the spending of the money, has already been designed by the breakup that's given there. So I just wanted to um, want you to reinforce that um, the committee will actually have some real input in how the, how the money's spent. Is that correct? Through or they'll recommend, a, recommend to council how it's to be spent. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. Um, through you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Oliver, um, the funding that is being um, provided to council is through different uh, organisations, both state and federal level, and, and come with a set of funding guidelines. Um, and so we will work with the committee um, to develop funding outcomes and sort of um, make them more specific to the Mansfield community, and that will come back through council for endorsement. Okay. Um Thanks very much for that. I'd just like to add a bit, and that is I'd like to thank you, Ms. Hutton, for you being proactive with this and your officers because it's, it's secured over a million dollars for our community, which is absolutely amazing. And I know it was a very short time span that you actually had to put in applications and had to decide, you know, this is the criteria, this looks like it'll, you know, attract funding. So you had to make some decisions to get the funding. It just wasn't like a blank, a blank um, piece of paper, was it? <laughs> no. Thank so you're you. very, very proactive, and I think thank you for that. Thank, thank you, you Councillor Oliver. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment. I know how important this committee is for council, for our community. Is there any anticipated timeline in when you? I mean, I know it's hard to get the members on that committee, but have you got a bit of a timeline envisaged in that? <coughs> Thank you. Um, through yourself, Madam Mayor, um, as soon as, or if this um, recommendation is moved this evening, then we will action um, this as soon as possible to make sure that that committee is established as quickly as we can. Thank you. That'll be good to hear. Um, do we have someone move a motion, please? Councillor Sladden. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I would like uh, to move an alternate motion, if I may. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that is the council um, endorse the establishment of the Mansfield Shire Council Business and Community Recovery Advisory Committee uh, to endorse the draft terms of reference of the Mansfield Shire Council Business and Community Recovery Advisory Committee with the following amendments. Increase the voting membership to 11 members expand the membership to include one representative from the agricultural sector, preferably a peak body, and ensure that the composition of the membership represents the broader makeup of the Mansfield Shire. As to question, <laughs> and appoint the mayor as uh, chair, of the Mansfield Shire Business and Community Recovery Advisory Committee. I don't know what to do about point four there, Madam Mayor. Um, <laughs> you yes. can nominate yourself. Thank you. Uh, appoint Councillor Paul Sladden as the second council representative and five seek nominations to the Mansfield Shire Council Business and Community Recovery Advisory Committee and six authorise the Chief Executive Officer to appoint members to the Mansfield Shire Council Business and Community <coughs> Advisory Committee in order to facilitate timely establishment of the committee. Thank you, Councillor Sladden. Well, well read and well thought through. Do I have anyone second that motion, please? <coughs> Councillor Westendorf, anyone against? I'll call a, call a vote on the motion. Those in favour? Passed. Thank you. Move on to 12.3.1, Notice of Transfer of Part, Harbour Line Drive, Goffs Bay. Councillors, you have a report there on page 25. Are there any questions, again, of Miss Hotton, please? No questions. Could I have someone move the motion on page 27? 
Councillor Westendorf, do you mind reading the motion, please? You're on mute, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Madam Mayor, I move that Council one determines that the portion of Harbour Line Drive, Goffs Bay, identified on the plan in attachment A to this report is not reasonably required for general public use. Two, we direct that the portion of Harbour Line Drive, Goffs Bay, identified on the plan in attachment A to this report is removed from Council's road register. Three, we note that no submissions were received in response to the public notice of intention to discontinue and transfer part of Harbour Line Drive published on 13 February 2019 in accordance with section 223 of the Local Government Act 1989. Point four, pursuant to clause three of schedule 10 to the Local Government Act 1989, discontinue the portion of Harbour Line Drive Goffs Bay identified on the plan in attachment A to this report. Five, Sell the land comprising the portion of Harbour Line Drive, Goffs Bay, identified on the plan in attachment A to this report to the owners of the land at 19 Harbour Line Drive, Goffs Bay for $10,000 and the cost to council of effecting the sale. Six, authorize the chief executive officer to publish notice of the discontinuation discontinuance in the Victorian Government Gazette and prepare and execute such documents as are necessary to give effect to the discontinuance and sale in accordance with this resolution. Thank you very much, Councillor Wessendorf. Do we have a seconder for the motion, please? Yes. Councillor Volkering, those, anyone against? All in favour? Carried. Thank you. <clears throat> we move on to 12.4.1. And it is the finance report for the 1st of July, 2019 to 30th of April, 2020. And I'll call on Ms. Kinsley to lead us through that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I might take the report as read and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Councillors, any questions on the finance report or any comments, please? I gather not. We have... Uh, a recommendation on page 33. Can I have a motion on that, please, Councillor Wissendorf? You're on mute. Thank you. Uh, I was just going to make the point, Madam Mayor, that this uh, report was also presented to the Audit and Risk Committee yesterday and that the Audit and Risk Committee has no concerns about it. Thank you. So you're du duly moving that. Thank you. Seconder? Councillor Olver, those in favour? Carried. Right, we move on to 12.4.2, the working, working for Victoria Fund, the finance manager. The report is there. Are there any questions of Ms Kinnersley? Or comments, statements, please. Councillor Volking. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, yes, look, I'm, I'm quite concerned about this package of, uh, as it relates to our shire. I know it's a considerable amount of money, but um, I have to say I find it, again, challenging to understand how uh, someone who might be unemployed would become employed through this funding uh, and yet six months down the track uh, be terminated from that employment. I would have thought it's uh, going to be real, no, no real benefit to any person who uh, might find themselves already in that situation of being unemployed. I know everyone wants work, but the federal government announced the job keeper program, I think, which has enabled businesses to subsidise the ongoing cost of their employees, certain employees, not all, to the tune of $750 a fortnight, I believe. Um, and I, I'm, for one, I'm not absolutely sure of what the unemployment figures are here in Mansfield. And I'm not sure, Ms. Kinnersley, if you're able to answer that. 
do we have a some sort of picture at the moment of what the unemployment situation is here, how COVID-19, the bushfires and other emergencies have impacted employment? Thank you, Councillor Waller. Crewing through the Mayor, I don't have that information at hand at this stage, no. No, thanks very much, man. I, I didn't think so. Look, um, I think these, you know, let's face it, we're in a, we're in a time where we don't really know what's going to happen. There's all sorts of things going on and clearly federal and state governments are keen to ensure that uh, people are gainfully employed with the, I think the underlying premise that, that money that they will earn will perhaps go back into the economy. And at a local level, that's gotta be a good thing as uh, further restrictions are eased across our community here in Mansfield and more broadly across the Shire. But I, I, what I'm struggling with is the impact on these people to be employed or re-employed in a field. And then in six months, there's a finite period, as I understand it, on the funding arrangements that they will then be terminated in another six months. So I don't know the benefit in that to individuals. The other aspect of it that concerns me somewhat is I think we're talking about a figure of 33.6 full-time equivalent positions. That's a, that's a fairly significant task for uh, our current staff to have to take on. It's an additional challenge for managers, supervisors, project officers, and others who may very well find themselves reaching out or employing or being a part of the employment process for these people. I'm sure they'll pick up skills and I'm sure they'll learn from various people, but I have to say, to me, it's, it looks very much like a thought bubble from state government. Uh, it's a nice handball, but we pick up the responsibility. And then who, who picks up, I suppose they're covered by work cover if, in the case of an accident. Uh, and there's a whole lot of process, induction. Now, any, anyone walking into any organisation these days has to be inducted into the organisation. That process normally takes two weeks before they're on the ground and, I guess, gainfully employed. Then there's the issue of productivity. How are we going to ensure that? How are we going to measure that? So there's just a range of questions. And whilst I commend the, the state government for this broad program, I think there are a million ways pardon the pun, uh, that this money could have been better used. Thank you. Uh, a few questions there and statements. Do you want to make comment on any of those? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, Councillor Sladden, have you got a question? I do, Madam Mayor, and I'll try to be succinct. Um, mine is the question in relation to community engagement. Uh, I note in your report, Ms. Kinsley, that uh, given the uh, urgency of this legislation that was put through by state government, and we cannot second guess the reasons why state governments make <laughs> any of their decisions. Um, however, the fact that community engagement has not been uh, a part of this process does concern me, which does bring me to the actual question I have is, will the community be able to uh, contribute to uh, ideas of where these people may be deployed on various projects around our Shire? Thank you, Ms Kinsley. Um, so through the Mayor, in relation to this funding, yes, it was quite quick that we were asked to submit our application. Um, through that process, we submitted a um, potential work plan, which did identify um, the particular roles that we would suggest that we would um, provide employment to. In terms of community involvement, I may need to defer to the CEO whether she has an opinion on that one. Madam CEO. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, these resources are not really around projects, they're resources internally. So it's about adding some grant to Council's organisation as it stands. I understand Council Sladden's concern around um, where the positions will be employed, but at this stage, it's, it's it, as the report says, it's, it's funding to employ th about 33 full-time equivalent staff. So what we've done here is we've looked at the areas where we're under-resourced at the moment, where Council could appreciate some extra resources, particularly given the COVID-19 situation, and we've identified positions that will help us through this current period and beyond it into recovery. In terms of community engagement, because they're not projects, it's not really a community concern. So it's not about identifying projects, it's about having some extra IT resources, for instance, or some extra resources in finance because of the, the current situation. Um, some of the other areas where we have identified we could do with some extra resources is in the out of the parks and gardens area where they could do some more maintenance during this period. So they're the sorts of resources that we're, that we're put in for. The other, other thing to note is that um, we're only paid after we claim for the resources. So if they don't eventuate, eventuate I can't even say that, eventuate, um, we, we're, not, we're not locked into having the resources. The other thing is, People have to register for this program in particular. So when they go on to the website, you register for Working for Victoria, there's a drop down um, box that says identify where and people would need to go on to that and say Mansfield. And then it's up to us to decide whether there's a match of skills for the gaps that we have. We're not committed to taking on people. So it would really be only about the resources in the areas that we need help with at the moment. In terms of onboarding and the and the extra um, the extra resources that we'd need internally to onboard this these new staff, the application actually has I think three full time equivalent or at least two that I know of around onboarding. So we, that they would be the first staff that we would get on board staff to help us onboard the others if you like. So. Um, we have thought through the areas that we're currently short staffed in. And so there's two, two reasons why we thought it was a worthwhile project to be involved in, and most councils are. One is that, that it's locally employing local unemployed people, and it's, it, it's filling areas that, where we currently have gaps. There are requirements on council not to fill positions that should be advertised or current positions. So they are, they are in addition. So thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Madam CEO. Councillor Oliver. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Look, I've got some questions and concerns, um, probably similar to Councillor Valkering's that he's raised, but I do have some questions. Um, and I note, uh, Madam CEO, that you talked about them providing three support staff uh, or money for three support staff. I assume that would still be six month, um, six month. Um. So my my questions are around the social, economic, cultural impact. Um, we've got maybe thirty people coming in to work in the in the council. Um, now that I would have thought that's going to have a dramatic. You know, impact. Go back to 12.3.2, which is the advisory committee for, business, for the recovery, and we talked about before, we are over a million dollars. Just looking at that, we're going to have an enormous job coordinating that committee and the spending of that money, which will require quite a lot of time from council officers. Um, I, you know, I'm, I might be wrong. My question is, can we? In, you know, use this and have these 30 odd people without having an economic and time commitment by existing staff. So I can speak to that question um, through the mayor. So as the CEO touched on is part of the list of um, roles is HR roles and they will be um, involved in the onboarding, but also the induction and the training 
of those staff. The funding does cover training costs of staff as well. Um, so much of that is covered. A lot of these roles are administrative office-based roles. They can easily be done. We're working in an offsite environment at the moment. Um, so we were mindful of that when we put those roles forward. Yes, there will be some time involvement of existing staff, um, but we believe that there will still be benefit over a six month time frame if we can bring some of these staff on board. And again, as the CEO touched on, the funding allows for 33.6 people, whether that actually eventuates depending on the level of unemployment in the community um, and the skills fit for what we're looking for is, is yet to be seen. Thank you, Ms. Kinsley. Councillors, Councillor Westendorp. Just, just a follow up, if I may. You, we, I, and I note that the report says, you know, 33 positions. I, I don't have a problem with six month contracts. I've, I've, in my working life, I've had occasion to take contracts for a fixed period, and everyone knows that at the end of it, you, you go and do something different. Um, but I, I guess I'm concerned, how many do we realistically expect? Because I think 33 to me seems like an awful lot. Um, in terms of the, the available pool that is accessible in, in Mansfield and then the number who are going to be interested in this kind of role. And, and what about if we get applications from outside the Shire? Must they be resident in the Shire to be able to qualify for this? Ms Kinsley? So um, I don't believe they must be resident within the Shire to receive this. Um, we would employ based on our standard employment considerations, just as we would employ everybody else. So these staff would be employed under our current enterprise agreements. The funding agreement itself does talk about um, we must comply with the local jobs first policy. I have been looking at that this afternoon to see the definition of local, which is, it looks like it's Australia, New Zealand, um, as opposed to within our community. So. Um, <laughs> it's local. Um, so again, because we're working in an off-site arrangement um, for much of our administrative staff at the moment, they can reside outside of the Shire, but we would consider the applications um, in accordance with our current employment policies and under the enterprise agreement. Um, it, to answer your question, how many, I really don't know. And again, I, I don't have statistics at this stage of the levels of unemployment. Um, I will go back though and touch on as well something that Councillor Vockering mentioned before about the six month contracts and where does that leave people. I think the intention of the government is that a lot of these people would have been stood down from their existing employment because of the COVID-19 situation and that there's a potential that they could go back to those pre-existing um, employment roles once COVID-19 ends. For example, if you're working in the hospitality industry, once the cafes open up again, they'll be looking to re-employ. So I think that's the intention of the six-month arrangements. Thank you. Councillor Volkring. Uh, thanks, Mandy. Um, wouldn't JobKeeper, wasn't jo or isn't JobKeeper 750 per fortnight uh, provided by the feds? Uh, address, address that. Possibly, I don't know a lot about JobKeeper because local government's not eligible. If, if I can, Madam, it's $750 per week. So it's about 1500 a fortnight. But a number of businesses actually haven't taken up the option to participate in JobKeeper. And so even though businesses may be eligible, some haven't taken that, that up. So I can't really comment on why though. Thank you, Councillor Oliver. Sorry, another question. Why have we applied for 33.6? Um, does that mean we have to try and get that many or could we not just you know, try and get 10 or 6? Or... Yep, so through the it's Mayor, um, as I said, the funding allows for 33.6, so we're approved up to that limit, but it will depend on um what availability there is within the employment pool through this program so the individuals will need to register we can only select from those registered within that pool so no we don't have to deliver 33.6 we will prioritize um, those positions that need to go first and those will start with hr to help us with the onboarding process of any after that um, but yes if, if at some point in time we decide that 10 is enough then that's where we can stop councillor sladden Uh, Madam Mayor, I was uh, going to um, read the recommendation. 
Okay, thank you. Could you please move the motion then and read it? Uh, did <coughs> Councillor Volkring have another question? Before? Yeah, well, Councillor Volkring. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just one final question to Mandy. Does that include on cost super work? Um, yes, all it on does. cost, payroll yes, it tax, does. the whole box and dice. Correct. Thank you, Councillor Sladden. Uh, Madam <coughs> Mayor, <clears throat> uh, the recommendation is the Council authorises the Chief Executive Officer and Council's Finance Manager to sign the grant agreement for the Working for Victoria Fund between the Department of Jobs, Precincts and Regions and Mansfield Shire Council. Thank you. Do I have a Councillor to second the motion? Councillor Wessendorf, anyone against? Councillor Volkring is against. Councillor Sladden, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, this is an opportunity for Mansfield to play its role in trying to uh, kickstart the, um, the Victorian economy. It's a program that has been developed by the state government. It's not something that uh, Mansfield Shire Council um, or the administration has dreamt up. Uh, the uh, the State government is there um, for various reasons, wanting to um, roll out uh, as much uh, stimulus as they possibly can. This is one of their programs, which, uh, as has been highlighted in the report, uh, comes at very little risk to council uh, with no um, co-funding required and it is an opportunity for um, us to provide some um, employment opportunities for locals. Um, although the definition of local may be, as Ms. Kinsley said, um, I'm sure the intent of it is to certainly look at um, Mansfield Shire residents first, uh, but obviously skill sets and you know, volume of applications will determine how many of those roles will be filled. Therefore, I'm um, happy to uh, move that recommendation, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Westendorf, would you like to speak in, as a seconder? Thank, thank you, Madam Mayor, very briefly. Um, I totally agree with Councillor Sladden's comments. I think we have an opportunity here to make a difference in some lives. And I know from personal experience that job seeker is not available to everybody. And so we do have people out there that are, are suffering um, reduced employment or unemployment. Yep. I see that we have an opportunity to do things for our residents and also for our ratepayers. And I see a scenario where there may be somebody in the metropolitan area who has a holiday house up here and says, I can work in Mansfield for six months and solve my family's financial problems that way. So I think it's a great program with very little risk to the Shire. Thank you, Councillor Wissendorf. Councillor Volkering, would you like to speak against the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Wissendorf's just kind of twigged with me something. I mean, I, I guess there are those people out there who are neither receive, in receipt of uh, JobKeeper or any other assistance who have lost their job and aren't getting it, any, aren't eligible for any benefit. Is that what I understand you to have just said, Councillor Westendorf, nodding your head? So I think that's something I wasn't aware of. I guess where I'm coming from again, uh, Madam Mayor, with for you is that uh, I just saying that like the 1.6 million is not an insignificant sum. And if that can be used gainfully to support people who are unemployed, I'm, I'm certainly supportive of that notion. What I would be more supportive of if 1.6 million was allocated to our community and we had more choice and flexibility about how, when, who, where we employ those people and make sure that they're you know, really well supported. Not that they won't be well supported because I know the motivation and the professionalism of existing officers and where they're coming from. But yeah, it's just that I, I just feel uncomfortable. It, it, sometimes governments have a tendency to throw money at the problem without thinking it through in its entirety. I just don't want to see us ending up with a whole lot of issues as a result of this program. Thank you, Councillor Westendorf. Um, 
Any other councillors wish to speak? Councillor Oliver. Um, yeah, look, I think um, there are some worries, but I think the benefits would outweigh the, um, the concerns and council officers obviously have talked this through and thought this through really well. Um, I think one of the real benefits for us will be people that normally work on Mount Buller, Mount Stirling, um, which may not happen. We may, if it does, couldn't the Laurie Blampede, it'll still happen late. But And there's a lot of very skilled people who um, normally work in, you know, up there, either indoor or outdoor. So <coughs> I think that might give some means for them to get some work. Thank you. Councillor Sladden, you have a right of reply. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I think the key point here that uh, we may be missing, um, and the CEO did uh, point this out, and that is this is not a donation or a grant of $1.6 million in cash to the Mansfield Shire Council. This is a program where Mansfield Shire Council has access, the potential access, to that amount of money. So if we only employ one person, we're not going to get $1.6 million. Right. We're only going to get the money that is going to cover that one person's wage. So it's not as if here's $1.6 million, I'll be, you know, go employ 33.6 people. This is an opportunity where <coughs> we can have access up to that amount of money. So therefore, if we have an opportunity to employ just one person, then that will benefit that one person and will benefit um, council in delivering services to our community. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sladden. I will now put the motion to a vote. Those in favour? Those against? Motion is carried. We'll move on to 12.5, which is corporate and organisational development. 12.5.1, the establishment of a Chief Executive Officer Performance and Remuneration Reference and Advisory Group. Through you, Madam on. Mayor, through you, Madam Mayor, I have realised that I have an absolute interest in this item, so I will be leaving the room while that is discussed. Thank you. Thank you. I'll call on the Corporate and Organisational Development Manager, Sharon Scott. Uh, this is your report. Um, is there anything you'd like to highlight or will I just call for questions from councillors? Um, through you, Madam Mayor, just um, any questions from councillors? Councillors, any questions on this establishment of this advisory group? Councillor Sladden? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Ms Scott, uh, it's just a, a simple question of compliance with the requirements of the um, Local Government Act 2020. Does this comply with that in terms of the composition of the uh, committee, subcommittee? Through you, Madam Mayor, I will take this question on notice, Councillor Sladden, and I'll provide you with a response when I have an answer to your query. Thank you. Could I have any other questions? Councillor Wetzendorf? A question for Ms Scott. Uh, I, I note that the recommendation is worded that we appoint the mayor and two councillors. Um, is there a reason why two was chosen in a council this size when it could well be a council a committee of the whole? Through you, Madam Mayor. As mentioned in the report, all councillors will be invited to take part. A number of Victorian councils have a minimum mayor and two councillors composition, and this is considered best practice. There is no legis legislative requirement for a minimum number of councillors on this group, and council may wish to formally appoint all councillors to the group if so desire. Thank you. Councillors, any other questions? Do I have someone move the motion with the change to item number two? Councillor Olver? You're on mute, councillor. Again, I'll move recommendation that council First of all, establish, number one, establish a Chief Executive Officer Performance and Remuneration Reference and Advisory Group. And number two, appoint the Mayor and the four, council, four councillors to the Chief Executive Officer Performance and Remuneration Reference and Advisory Group. 
and three, develop the group's term of reference for endorsement at the June 2020 council meeting. So that's Thank all you. councillors. Thank you, yes. Do you want to write all councillors rather than mayor and four? Yeah, whichever way. Thank you. Do I have a seconder for the motion, please? Councillor Wessendorf, anyone against? I'll call for the, uh, those in favour. Thank you. That is passed. I'll move on to item number 13. We will just call the CEO back in. Thank you. Thank you, Madam CEO. We move on to item number 13, Assemblies of Councillors. Would you just mention that, please, Madam CEO? Thank you, Madam Mayor. The Assemblies of Council laws are there for your consideration record. In actual fact, I know there is a misspelling under the 5th of May 2020, just Daryl Hunt. It should read instead of Daryl Hun. So um, the report is there for councillors' consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Councillors, any alter, other um, omissions or additions? Thank you. We have a recommendation. Could I have someone move that as a motion and read it, please? Councillor Wessendorf. You're on mute. Thank Madam you. Mayor. Thank, Thank you. you. Madam Mayor, I move that Council receive and note the Assembly of Councillors report for the period of 17 March to 5 May 2020. Thank you very much, Councillors. Do I have a seconder for the motion? Councillor Sladden, anyone Sorry. again? Sorry, Councillor question. Oliver. <laughs> Sorry, I just, had a, I just had a question. Um, when Madam CEO mentioned about Daryl Hunt, um, who, Melissa Ludman, was also the name there. That's the consultant for our, the two consultants on the waste management strategy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, David, oh yeah, I'm looking in the wrong spot. Was David Hung, was Daryl Hung. So, okay, yep. Okay. Daryl Hung. Thank you. So Sorry. could I have a seconder? I think I, Councillor Sladden, all in favour? Thank you, that's carried. Move on to item number 14, the advisory and special committee reports. Madam CEO. Thank you, Madam Mayor. There's two instruments of delegation that were sealed, signed and sealed by council in April. Um, the first one is the instrument delegation by council to members of staff. And the second one is instrument, instrument of appointment and authorization planning and environment act 1987. Thank you. Councillor Volkring, would you read the motion, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, recommendation that Council note the document sealed by Council on 21st April 2020, namely instrument of delegation by Council to members of staff and two instrument of appointment and authorisation planning and environment act 1987. Thank you. Do I have a seconder, please? Do I have a seconder? Councillor Sladden? Anyone against? All in favour? Carried. We move to the suspension of standing orders. There's a motion there that council suspend standing orders to facilitate public question time. Do I have someone move that please? Councillor Volkering, seconder. Councillor Westendorf, all in favour? 
move to public question time. Because of the virtual meeting we have requested, and we will continue to this regardless of how our meetings are run, that people lodge their questions or they can be in the gallery when we start having the gallery again. They can lodge their questions on the website before Monday prior to the council meeting. And this will be an ongoing process. We actually have three questions um, that have been lodged in time for this meeting tonight, which I will read out. They are from Dr. Pamela Delgish. And in relation to 12.2.1, it was a question, request a wave of statutory planning fees for a planning permit with the understanding that there is no policy in place. The current climate of poor finances of the council, why was the recommendation of not to waive the fee for the autistic society, well, wrong wording, but sorry, overturned by council? Um, I have an answer here, and we all know that we have dealt with that recommendation earlier, and we have approved the request to waive the planning application permit fees. The second question is related to 12.3.2, the Business and Community Recovery Advisory Committee. It has been noted in the agenda that there is a budget of $1 million for spending in 12 months, and I assume that the budget allocations are part of the grant applications submitted by council without any community input. Generally, the successful applicants are to spend money as the application indicates. However, at times, at times, changes to the budget application may be able to be applied for. If this is correct then, with respect to the terms of reference, what is the ability of the advisory committee to re recommend a different budgetary allocation and new initiatives and the Council to accept these amendments to improve the outcome for the community. And the response from Ms Hotton, and I will read that, the funding has been allocated to the Mansfield Shire Council under specific funding guidelines. The funds allocated to Council were not applied for, rather Council, as an unidentified effective bushfire area, has been allocated these monies. The funds come with broad parameters of which Council is to required to work within. There is some ability for council to identify projects within the guideline requirements. The timeline for the delivery of the funding is specific to each funding agreement with some over a 12 month period or yet to be confirmed. The concept of a committee comprising of community business representation is to ensure that recovery activities undertaken with the funds aimed at the community and economic recovery are designed and delivered within the guidelines with appropriate community input. And the final question from Dr. Dalglish, question 12.3.3, Botanical Garden Playground update. As a member of the Station Precinct Activation Advisory Committee, this upgrade has come as a surprise, as I am wondering why this was not raised as part of the community engagement. What is the progress update on the adventure playground in the station precinct activation master plan? And the responses come from our development services manager, Ben Mackay. Detailed design for the heritage display and storage along with all the abilities adventure play areas will commence shortly in, in the 19th, 2019-20 financial year, which will enable council to determine the likely cost of the projects. It is anticipated that project delivery will be proposed in the 21-22 budget based on the costings from the detailed design. However, the project will be shovel ready if external funding sources become available prior. And thank you to Dr. Dalglish for um, putting the questions in and we encourage the community to um, when you can come to the gallery, you can ask questions, but with this process, we, if we get them the Monday before the council meeting, we can have staff answer those for you. Could I please have that someone move the motion that council resume, resume standing orders, please? Councillor Wessendorf, the seconder. Councillor Sladden, all in favour? Carried. We move to the closure of meeting to members of public, the public for a confidential item. So could someone please move the motion on page 45 and read the motion um, to all. So Councillor Oliver. 
You're on mute, Councillor. Getting very good at that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That the meeting be closed to members of the public under Section 66 2A of the Local Government Act 2020 to consider confidential information as defined by Section 3, bracket 1 of the Local Government Act 2020 as a council business information being information that would prejudice the council's position in commercial negotiations if prematurely released. Thank you. Could I have a seconder for that, please? Councillor Westendorf, all in favour? Thank you. Carried. Thank you to everyone. We will be back to close the meeting when we have finished the confidential item. Thank you.
Hello, Mandy, were you waiting for us? Sorry, we are now back to live streaming to our community and those who have watched us. Uh, apologies for the time and the confidential item. I thank you all. I thank our staff for fantastic work on making sure that we got through this. I don't think your nerves really are needed because you've worked tirelessly to make it work. So thank you to all council officers and thank you councillors for your patience and your input in really good conversation and debate tonight. So well done to everyone. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for a well-run meeting. Thank you.